how are you? I'm out here in the greenhouse today and I thought it would be fun to share a little bit more laid back video with you. And what I'm doing is putting in some flower seeds. I made my first ever soil blocks here. I'll show you them. They turned out really good. Although I don't exactly love the seed mix that or the yeah, the soil mix that I have here. I wouldn't choose it again, but it's fine for this this time here. So I have three trays, if you can see. This tray I already did, this first one, and I'll tell you what I put in it. I put uh, these big petunias. If you saw my Baker Creek Seed Hall video, that's where I got those. This is Dollar Tree petunias that I also started, a mix of colors. Let me just swipe this away. Um, what else did I do? These Cosmos, seashell Cosmos, and then two types of coleus. This one that is a sunset coleus, it looks so pretty. And then another mixed coleus, this one here that has more pink and uh, more, a little bit more vibrant colors in it. The last thing that I did on this tray was the salvia, the red salvia. So that one is already done. And these were some of the tiniest seeds that you have ever seen in your life. The petunia seeds are extremely small. And so I was like, wow, those were really small. And then I got to the coleus seeds and they're even smaller. I think in these packs of coleus, there was probably like six or eight seeds total. Like they were the finest little seeds I've ever seen and not many of them at all. So on this tray here, let's just get to it. And what we're gonna start with is, um, I have them labeled here as well. This is some tape that I put on here. Um, here it is. This tape here, it's just like paper tape. So I put that on the edge and then I'm using my garden marker, which actually is worth investing in a garden marker specifically. It actually stays on. I don't know how. So even with moisture and with sunlight and all of that, it, it stays on. So I bought a couple of those last year and they are specifically for the garden and they work very well. So, um, okay, I have the tray already labeled here though. So I'm gonna just go on down the line. This is asparagus. So asparagus is not gonna do anything for me. Obviously it's not a flower seed either, but um, you just have to get it started at some point. You know, you can buy asparagus crowns also, but um, this is the seeds for that. They're pretty big. You can buy asparagus crowns also, but even still, you're gonna be waiting a couple years to have anything come of them. I'm putting two seeds per cell here, or per soil block here. And even though I have put the seeds in the first tray, I haven't covered them over with any soil yet. I'm gonna just wait and do all that at one time at the end and put a little water as well. So yeah, I have to concentrate a little tiny bit too <laughs> to put the seeds in. So in they go, that is the asparagus. Only dropped a few. This one says, so uh, start indoors eight to 10 weeks before the last frost, we're well beyond that. Two to three seeds, uh, half inch deep and transplant after 10 to 12 weeks is what it says. After three years, they will produce for 20 to 30 years, it says. So you're playing the long game when you do the asparagus, for sure. Next up is calendula. That's this one from Baker Creek that I'm using this year. Open this baby up. I'm really enjoying the greenhouse. So unfortunately, the stuff that we put in here for, <laughs> earlier uh, before the winter really hit. I'm putting about two or three of these calendula uh, seeds per cell also. Um, that stuff just didn't do very well. You can see, and my cat is outside this door. Um, no, that's turkeys. You can see back here that pot had a big papaya in it. It froze, it completely froze. The two papaya trees that I had over there completely froze. Now the stuff that I put in the long planters there, it did okay and it's fine. So it's just kind of hanging out at this point. But um, most everything didn't do great in here. So we'll have to really change our game plan for heating and we might still even need to cover things in here when we have really, really hard freezes like we had this um, you know, winter. 
So yeah, we just weren't all that prepared for it. We put a heater in here and that type of thing, but it's still, the stuff still froze. So yeah, it didn't, it didn't go great. I'm gonna tell you that. Okay, so that is the calendula. What's next? Black Eyed Susan. I love these. This year was my first year to grow this plant and it is a vine and it is so beautiful. Honestly, it took for me until fall before these ever bloomed or anything, but it's worth it. So I want to put these around in a few different spots this year. I had it in a planter up on the porch. I thought it would kind of wrap around our um, uh, handrails and stuff like that and grow, but it didn't. It really didn't do that. But it still looked pretty when it finally did bloom. But now I just know better where not to put it and to find a, a better spot. If you hear animals, it's because I'm like, you know, out here in the mix with everybody. So hopefully I can grow more of this Black Eyed Susan vine because it is so beautiful. The flowers on it are so beautiful when it, when it does bloom. This is a mixed one also. So it says orange, yellow, buff, or white blossoms, which sounds so pretty. I have a turkey looking at me here. Next up, blanket flower. Look at this one. These are so beautiful. I grew them last year and I kind of just tucked them in. This is something that I like to tuck in into spots in the garden. Like when I put stuff in, I like to tuck in some flowers um, in the open areas. These are such funny looking seeds. Can you see them? If that will focus. They're like little hairy seeds, but they're so cute. And I'm flicking them everywhere. There's one. This is a mixed color also. So it just gives you several different types of blooms. I put about two to three of those per soil block as well. That was these blanket flowers. Look at that one, how beautiful. At least my nails are black because I did. I am bad about not wearing gloves. I just don't like to wear gloves. Okay, Echinacea is next. That's purple cone flower is another name for that. When I was younger, there's turkeys everywhere. Um, when I was younger, my mother swore by echinacea because I had a period of my life for about 10 years that I couldn't take any antibiotics because everything I would take I was allergic to. I was really sick as a like baby child. <laughs> I had um, meningitis, bacterial meningitis as a baby and like almost died from my understanding. And um, I would assume that that um, gave me some sort of resistance to antibiotics, I guess. So anyway, I couldn't take antibiotics for like 10 years. So anytime I would get a twinge of anything, any kind of sickness, my mother would shove, shove the echinacea at me. Take your echinacea. And I would, and it was very effective. It was very effective. I didn't get sick much. I didn't get sick for like 10 or 15 years, literally. I mean, maybe a little virus here or there, but not sickness where I literally needed antibiotics. So it worked. The echinacea works. Okay, next up is chamomile. This is the German chamomile. This did great last year. I just did not save any like I would have wanted to. These are extremely small seeds also. I can see already. <laughs> mm, let's see here. Oh my gosh. I wish you could see just how fine these are. There's no way for me to even show you. It's like a powder. They are so small. And I've, I mean, I don't need hardly any of those. Okay, I'm just gonna sprinkle them over and just hope for the best, you know? So this is something like if you start seeds for it and it grows and you put it in the ground, these tiny seeds will grow more. If it is something that can survive in your area, this is a perennial that will come back. This is just like petunias. I'm having petunias pop up everywhere around here because the seeds are so fine and they spread in the wind. So for the last few years, I've been growing petunias, you know, start them from seed and all that, and tuck them in all, all over the place around the farm. 
And um, so yeah, they're starting to really pop up on their own at this point. So that's good. Okay, this last tray is going to be Dahlia's. Geese everywhere. Two different types of Dahlia's. One is a pom-pom Dahlia and the other is like a dwarf Dahlia. So the first one I'm doing is pom-pom. Pom-pon, I don't know. Pompin, maybe. Pompin, pompin, I don't know. Okay, these are pretty good size seeds, so that'll be good. Two in each hole. The first year that I had a garden, I grew a ton of dahlias that I had purchased at um, Home Depot. Every year they sell Dahlia tubers and I'm always tempted by them. This year at my Home Depot for like two or three tubers, it was like $16 or something, 15 or $16. It blew my mind. The first year when I bought those tubers, I think that the two or I think that th there was three in each pack and they were about $7 then, which I thought was a lot at that point. That was about five years ago. Um, this is the mixed, whoops. Next up is the mixed um, dwarf dahlias. So if you buy dahlia, Sheldon, scratching. Sheldon. If you buy tubers, dahlia tubers, and put them in the ground, they grow. You can do one of two things. What I did mistakenly, honestly, was take them up. I took them up, I thought that I needed to. They can overwinter here in my area. I shouldn't have taken them up. What I did was try to take them up and store them for the winter, and basically they rotted over the winter, and I couldn't use them the next um, spring. So I should have just left them in the ground. These are the same thing. You're starting from seed here, of course, they will turn into tubers once you um, put them into the ground. They will make tubers and you can leave them the same exact way. So you don't have to redo every single year. Now, they can rot in the ground just the same as well, um, depending on the spot that you put them in. So try to choose, you know, the best spot that you have. But they're also very easy to start from seed and they grow very well that way. Okay, the next up is bachelor buttons. I have two different varieties of those. I really like these. They are just a cute plant. One is a blue variety that I have and the other is a mixed color variety. And I think they're both doubles. Like um, they have bigger blooms on them. Yep. So we will start Actually, I want to start with the blue. The blue is what I wrote down first. I always go ahead and label everything first and then um, seed everything because if I try to label as I go, I won't do it. If I try to label after, that's impossible because I won't remember. These are cute little seeds also. They look like little rockets or something. dropped a bunch of them down there but they're just gonna have to stay there because they're kind of wedged in okay on each of my trays the trays that first of all the trays that I'm using are like food service trays and I thought that that would be a nice way to be able to water these like they'll hold water but also they're nice and flat where you can easily maneuver your um, soil blocker I think it worked well. We'll see how it does. I mean, of course it could be like the totally wrong idea, but that was just my thought that that would probably work well. I ordered them on Amazon and I can link those for you if you want. This is the mixed color bachelor buttons. Did I get them all? Yeah, I did. 
see look at these little seeds are they not so cute they have like little um fluffy tails on them okay last um yeah last will be nasturtium i have two different varieties of nasturtium and one is a mix pretty um red tones and yellows and then the other one is that rose nasturtium that I ordered from Baker Creek. And I'm really excited about this one. Both of the nasturtium rows are a little bit longer. So we'll have a good amount of these. The only way that I've ever seeded nasturtium is direct sown them into the garden. Um, but today I'm going to start them this way because they didn't do all that well for me direct sown in the garden. Maybe it was just, you know, who knows what it was. But. Okay, so this is the mix. This is Alaska mix is what it's called. There's not that many of these seeds, so I'm just going to be careful. Some of these seeds don't actually look that good, but what do I know, you know? Okay, I can go back and put one more seed per. I have heard that you can take a nail file or something to these or soak them. Um, I'm not doing that today, but some seeds do better than others if you soak them first. Last up is the rose nasturtium. Fingers crossed that this one does really good because it looks beautiful. <laughs> There's a lot of these. y'all hear the chickens? They are too much. I didn't realize Millie's outside. She's up front there. I can see her walking around looking. <laughs> okay, the last thing that I need to do is to start to cover the seeds over. So I saved back a little bit of this dry, of the seed starting mix while it was still dry before I dampened it. So I'm just going to sprinkle this over. You can use um, uh, vermiculite if you want. I don't have vermiculite, so I'm just going to use this seed starting mix and cover over the seeds. And then I'll go back and sort of tap it tap it in place that way it stays I kept telling myself last week to order vermiculite I never did and I can't really find it locally I might could find it at Home Depot but it seems like it's so much more pricey there so I just I'm going to use this instead which is fine Yeah, Millie wants to come in. Millie, you want to come in? Come on. Hi. Here's Millie. Here she is. Here's Millie. My old lady girl. Stay here with me a minute. I am loving that this weather is feeling so nice right now. Honestly, even in the um, greenhouse here, even on days when it is like 55 or 60 outside, it'll be up to 100 degrees in here. We have a little um, thermometer that's in here and it reads in the house. So yeah, it gets quite warm in here. And that's just because when the sun is out, it really heats up quickly. So today is kind of a cloudy day, so it's actually a good day to be out here because, you know, um, even when it's 55 or 60 hours, it still feels pretty hot at 100 degrees inside somewhere, um, even though it's nice to warm up. I'm just dabbing on the soil here. Hopefully I have enough, but I do have a little bit of my mix left down there. 
what the um I will, I'll show you the mix that I use here it is and I'll show you but I'm not necessarily recommending it because I don't know if it's going to be good or not I used half I used one bag of this mixed with one bag of this from this was from Walmart I just grabbed it the other day you might have seen my last video um organic three-in-one seed starting mix it's woody though it it has bits of wood like this big this is very large for seed starting mix of course the all of it's not that big but mm, it's not my favorite it's not my favorite so that's why i mixed it with the jiffy starting the seed mix because i wanted to kind of have a little bit finer um mix because that's that was pretty big for seeds to get started in anyway okay nearly there hopefully these asparagus are going to do something for us i have planted asparagus crowns in the past i still have them in the garden in there but um they've never done a whole lot but i haven't you know i haven't really taken care of them probably the way that they would desire that was probably two years ago that I planted the asparagus crowns to begin with. And we got several asparagus, I think they were one year old crowns when I bought them. We harvested a couple of asparagus one year, not this last year. Um, they didn't do anything this last year, except for make some um, asparagus like fronds, I think they're called, you know, like the leafy part of the plant really didn't shoot up any asparagus at all last year. Okay, so this is all covered with soil finally. And I have my watering can here, which I just broke the handle earlier. I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of water over top here just to moisten everything once more. Then I'm gonna cover all of these trays over with plastic wrap. Clark is digging in the yard. Ay, ay, ay. I need to figure out a better watering solution for out here because I don't really like this can. It's too big. It's awkward. Can you tell? <laughs> it's not great. Okay, now last up is the plastic wrap. Can y'all see this dog? <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. I'm just going to cover the rest of them and I'm going to set them over here on the other side as I get them covered. So once everything, once the things begin to germinate, then you just remove the plastic wrap off of there. Um, of course they don't, they don't need to stay covered after they've germinated or anything. Um, just to keep nice and humid in there until they do. Otherwise it might, the seeds would probably dry out before they germinate in the soil. And that makes it very difficult for them to actually germinate. Okay. 
Okay. Now that's got it. Okay, so this is what we have here. Everything is covered. You see it's already starting to get a little humid under that plastic wrap. Turn you around here. And um, that's just going to keep everything nice and damp. Okay, well, I've got my little flower seed started at this point, and this is the first year that I'm starting seeds here in our greenhouse. Typically, I start my seeds indoors. So indoors, I have um, heat mats and grow lights and all that that I would set up in order to accommodate seed starting inside. But out here, I don't really need all that. It's nice and warm. Things should germinate just fine without any additional you know, help from me. So I'm definitely gonna utilize my little shelves here that Alan put in. That way I can start all the seeds out here this year. So that takes care of flowers and probably in the next couple of days, maybe even tomorrow, if I'm feeling really good, um, <laughs> then I can get started on the, the uh, vegetable garden seeds. So the things that need to be started a little bit early for the vegetable garden would be like tomatoes and peppers specifically everything else doesn't really need to be that super early for the vegetable garden but anyway it doesn't really matter i've got to get more soil and everything to make more soil blocks first but i do think that my first attempt at the soil blocks has done has gone pretty well so i will probably get a different kind of soil um to use on the next set of soil blocks but basically the same thing some sort of seed starting mix that you can wet down and will hold together pretty nicely so we'll see how these do um hopefully they're going to do just fine for starting our flowers but hopefully you have enjoyed this little bit more laid back look at a video and a little bit less edited just hanging out together in the greenhouse putting some seeds in and maybe that means i can get it up to you a little bit faster than uh, my cooking videos and things like that which will be great also so it was good spending some time with you today and I appreciate you hanging out while we started some flower seeds for the 2024 garden season. So I'll see you back here again real soon.